photographing the sunrise or sunset and getting some decent color in your images is hugely dependent on the amount of cloud cover you've got in the sky at your particular location. And therefore, being able to predict whether there's gonna be decent cloud cover and what kind of cloud it's gonna be is a really useful tool if you're a landscape photographer. I found that going to the effort of predicting yourself whether there's gonna be decent cloud cover stands you a far greater chance of scoring some awesome color in the sky for your landscape photos. And to do that, I've been using a service called windy.com. It's a website which uses a couple of forecast models to show you whether there's going to be cloud in the sky. And by using that website, along with some basic uh, information about how the sun interacts with the clouds, we can decide whether it's worth setting the alarm clock and getting up nice and early in the morning or making our way down to a chosen location in the evening to try and score a nice image later in the day. Guys, here's a quick guide about how to use windy.com to better predict whether you're gonna get some nice color at sunrise or sunset. Obviously, the amount of color that you get in the sky at sunrise or sunset is hugely dependent upon the cloud cover and more specifically on the amount of high and medium level cloud. Low cloud isn't so great for the color. It just provides a bit of a block, to be honest. So I've started off here at the home screen and I've got the satellite image on my screen just showing me what the, the cloud cover is looking at this precise moment in time. In order to see what the cloud is going to be in the future, we can use windy.com's forecast modeling. They use two systems and if I click on the clouds tab over on the right here, you can see them both shown down here. We've got the ECMWF forecast model and the GFS forecast model. I have found that the GFS model is much more reliable, so I'm going to click over to that one now. You can see I've got clouds listed in the toolbar here. If that's not showing on your screen when you come here, just click on the More Layers button and toggle it in this section on the right here. So the first thing we want to do is get this clock back to the current time. And you can see this is how the cloud is looking at this precise moment in time where I live here on the east coast of Australia in south coast New South Wales. And because we've got this forecast model option in windy.com, we can actually move the timeline forwards and backwards and scrub backwards and forwards along this timeline. And the forecast model will show us what it thinks that the cloud is gonna do. So obviously the first thing to say is we're more interested in high and medium clouds, but we're gonna leave the whole cloud option on and we're just gonna scrub forward on the timeline. It's gonna drag this forward and see what these clouds are gonna do. And what I'm looking for is gaps in the cloud. So for instance, here's a gap in the cloud. What we want to see at sunrise on the east coast of Australia, because so the sun is rising over here, we want to see a gap about 100 kilometers away from our current location. So if I'm over here, somewhere around here, I'd like to see a gap in the cloud. And the opposite holds true for sunsets, which obviously happen in the west. I'd like to see some cloud here and a gap around about here, around about where Canberra is showing up on my map. And so if this particular time frame, it was five in the morning, which is around about sunrise, I want a nice big gap over here and I'm not seeing one. So let's move the timeline forward and we're still not seeing any gaps. Now here's some interesting looking cloud uh, possibility there on Thursday. Yes, time's right. This is around sunset, about five o'clock in the afternoon. We can see some cloud. This is where I currently am around here. A Little bit of cloud. There's a possibility that Thursday sunset might be okay. It's not really enough cloud to be honest there's a possibility. And of course, these forecast models are not 100% reliable. They can and do get it wrong. So always go out anyway. Use the law of averages in your favor. Go out and shoot as often as you can, and you're much more likely to snag a nice sunrise or sunset shot. Let's carry on scrubbing forward so through this timeline, cycling forward, see if we can find some more decent cloud. A little bit coming in there. 
What's that bit there? That's interesting. Sunday at sunset. That's no good to me. It's in the wrong direction. I need the cloud over here. Let's keep going. Okay, here's some cloud, but this has got rain in it. Okay, so I know for a fact that that's going to have multi-level cloud. Not just a good high and medium, that's going to have lots of low-level cloud in it. Okay, yeah. So getting a bit of rain around here on Monday. Quite a bit of rain by the looks of it. Now, the further out you get, so Thursday, we're currently away, so we're almost a week ahead. You really can't rely too heavily on these forecast model models. Broadly speaking, they're pretty good, but you can't rely on them too much. As you can see on the right here, I can actually toggle between them. So if I click to high clouds, and that's all I'm seeing on the screen. This is the good stuff. This is what I want to see. And if this was a um, sunrise and there was a gap around about here, then I would be thinking, oh, okay, gonna have to have the camera ready. Uh, if it was a sunset, then obviously I want some nice high cloud over here. But the great thing about Windy is that you can click between these different layers of cloud and see what's making up the current cloud cover at the location you wanna take your photographs at. If you fly a drone, you can also click on the wind tab and click anywhere on the map and you get a little marker shows you that location and it tells you the predicted wind speed for that location if i scroll it back to the current time you can see it's currently 19 kilometers an hour which is absolutely serviceable wind speed for a drone it would have no problems with that whatsoever windy.com also does some really awesome thunderstorm mapping if we come down to the rain and thunder section and click on thunderstorms i've just clicked off that and then scroll out, we can see where all the thunderstorms are happening at the moment. Okay guys, so broadly speaking, that is how I use windy.com to predict what the weather's going to do. I scroll forward through the timeline, see what the cloud's gonna do, check whether it's high or medium, which is the good stuff, and work out the time, see if it's gonna be good for sunrise or sunset, and I adjust my schedule for photography accordingly. And that's it guys, thanks very much for watching this little tutorial on using windy.com to predict your sunrise and sunset colour possibilities. Hope you've enjoyed it, if you have, hit the subscribe button, I've got more tutorials like this coming. Thanks guys, catch you on the next one.